Welcome back. This is section 19.2 on entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. So we need to review the term entropy. And entropy is very scary because there's two terms that kind of sound alike and you're not quite sure which is which. You have entropy and enthalpy. All right, so entropy is uh, designated with a capital letter S. And it is disorder or randomness in a system. So let's imagine that I have ice where all the molecules are tightly bound together in a matrix. And I melt that ice into water where the water molecules are free to move around each other. That's more random. The entropy has, has gone up as I've melted that ice. And then if I boil the, wa the water into steam, then the molecules are even more random. They're all over the place. Gases are very random. So the entropy would go up more. Let's imagine that I have uh, two moles of uh, reactants, gaseous reactants, and I, they react together to make another gas, but I only end up with one mole of, of product. So here's my example. So I have two moles of gas on the left, and it's going to react to whatever they are, and they're going to react together to give me one mole of gas on the right. Which one is more random? Okay, so if the, the material compacts itself into one mole when it used to be in two, one mole would be more orderly, and that's the opposite of entropy. Entropy is chaos or random. So in this case, this would have a high entropy and this would have a low entropy, okay? Enthalpy, remember, is the total, uh, the total amount of energy in a system. So let's say that I have uh, bond energy at the beginning. I've got a certain amount of energy stored in the bonds of the reactants, and then I have a certain amount of energy stored in the bonds of the products. Okay, well, what's going on? My H is going to be my total products minus my reactants, and if, if this is a higher number, so let's say that's a 4 and this is a 7, 4 minus 7 is minus 3, I would get a... a enthalpy change uh, of negative, then what's happened to the extra heat? What, ha what happened to the three, the three whatevers of heat? So if I, if I had energy, let's say that's in joules or whatever, kilojoules, I have seven kilojoules of energy stored in the bonds and now I only have four, well, the extra went out and I have an exothermic reaction. Well, you're going to see that the chemistry Normally, nature favors exothermic reactions. They, there's so many of them because they, you want a big pile of ashes and some gases at the end. That's spontaneous. A forest fire is spontaneous. It, you don't have to force it. It happens by itself. And you end up with, with normally a very huge amount of heat released, and often you'll end up with more randomness at the end than you did at the beginning. It's more orderly at the beginning, more random at the end. It's usually spontaneous. You can have examples where, for instance, you could have um, two moles of gas at the beginning and uh, one mole of gas at the end, just like we did. Uh, that would be spontaneous. But if it's going to lose en entropy, it must be made up for it by being hugely exothermic. So you're going to end up losing lots of energy. So spontaneity has to do with energy and entropy, not just heat. Not just heat flowing out of a system is, is good for being automatic, but also becoming more random. So you're going to see combinations of the two. Is it possible that you could have something spontaneous that happens when you have to actually absorb heat from the surroundings? Yes, okay? But the, the products must be more random than the beginning. Is it possible that you could have something become like this two going to one? That, that's lower entropy, but higher enthalpy, and it could still be spontan spontaneous. So you're gonna see that entropy uh, has to do with, uh, or, or spontaneity has to do with both of these, and we looked at a little bit yesterday, okay? Now the second th law of thermodynamics basically says that the universe t tends towards maximum entropy. 
my bedroom, my, my car, your locker, always get more and more chaotic, more random, more, more messy. And then to put it back to normal, you have to fix it. You have to clean it. You have to put energy into it to restore it to its normal state. So if you were to have something that's reversible, okay, let's say I have a, re a reaction and I have a reversible reaction where I can, the products can be made by the reactants or the products can form the reactants, okay, either way. Well, then what's happening is that, that if you were to say start here and go to here, so you have a certain amount of energy, you have a certain activation energy, if you remember that, the energy you have to put in to make it happen, and then you have a certain amount of energy out. It is possible that I could go this way and make some products, or I could take the products once they're made and go back this way. I could have a reversible reaction. If you have a reversible reaction, then your delta S is going to be constant, okay, because the change in the change in chaos going in one direction and the chaos go, is exactly undone by going backwards it would be like taking a movie of you cleaning your room and then doing the movie backwards and then forwards and then backwards it can go one way and then it can come all the way back okay so in a reversible reaction okay when you have a reversible reaction then you are going to have um, delta X, delta s is going to equal 0 in a reversible reaction, okay? So if you, um, if for instance you have the delta S of say this, and it's made up for for the delta S of this, then your de the change in your, in your S, the delta, your change, is gonna be zero. So you, it, you can look at the entropy of one thing, or you can expand and look at it of something that it's reacting. So you have something called the system, and then the surroundings. So my system can become more chaotic and my surroundings can actually become more, more orderly or my system can become more orderly and the universe can become more chaotic. And so both of those could be looked at together. So this first one is that the change of S, if it is reversible, okay, if you have a reversible system, okay, then that's what the, the rev under Q, the heat rev means the heat of a reversible system at a certain temperature, you can find the change in uh, entropy. So, for instance, what's reversible? The thing that comes to mind would be phase changes. If I can, say, add heat and melt the ice into water or then remove heat and freeze the water back into ice, the same path is crossed both times. And so, in this case, you could, now the T here is not change in temperature, it's at a temperature. So for instance, you could say, what's the enthalpy, okay, of water at zero degrees Celsius um, as it freezes from water to ice, okay? So you would, the, your T would be zero Celsius in Kelvin, so 273. You were finding your delta S and your Q would hap happen to be uh, whatever your specific heat of water. Remember Q is, Q is going to be usually mass times specific heat times change in temperature, right? Or you can say the moles, how many moles of, of, a, of stuff do you have? And then um, how many joules per mole is the specific heat capacity of that stuff, like water? And then you could end up, that's Q, and then divide by the temperature, and you could find out how much, how much chaos, how much more chaos is it when you melt it, or how much less chaos is it when you freeze it, okay? So delta S equals uh, Q rev over T is for a reversible reaction, and then you can also see that if you have, say, a reversible reaction, like a phase change, and your pressure is the same, if your pressure is constant, then you'll see that your enthalpy and your heat is exactly the same because there isn't anything else to go up and down. If your pressure is the same and your temperature is the same, then your heat is your energy. So in this case, you're going to have the enthalpy uh, heat of fusion over T is also going to be your entropy. The last thing here is for a reversible reaction, 
you're going to get a zero sum of the system and the surroundings. Okay, whatever you lost to the surroundings is gained if you go backwards. Okay, that's just like the same as if you boil water, you're going to get more entropy, and then you freeze water, you're going to get less entropy, and it'll, or it'll go back and forth. But if you have an irreversible reaction, okay, let's say that I burn some wood. I burn some wood, and I get fire, and I get heat, and the heat will warm the air above the fire and then go away. Okay, well, I have less... I have, uh, I have less energy at the end, if I just have some ash and some carbon dioxide gas left at the end, some soot, then it was very exothermic. Well, but I also heated the universe so that the system, even though the, the, the system may have gained entropy, the universe could have, the surroundings could have gained uh, entropy, and then irreversible reactions will always go higher. So the universe is tending towards maximum entropy. That's the second law of thermodynamics. It means that your delta S is always getting bigger in the universe. The universe is always becoming more and more and more disorderly. Okay? So, so when God said, let there be, that, that was as orderly as it gets, and then it just, then it just kind of dissipates all throughout time and to where it will tend towards maximum disorder, okay? That's why the sun would burn out one day or whatever, okay? This is hard stuff. I hope it helps you.